Welcome back, y'all. In this video, I'm gonna give you a tour of my dream binder. This is a binder that I carry with me almost everywhere. It says Jeff Anderson Schedules and Calendars. It's actually much more than that. Before we get into it, I wanna show you the front of this binder, which is a picture of my family. There's my beautiful wife and my two strong boys and my mother and father. And then this is a picture of my two boys with my wife's mother and father. The point of this is that every time I look at this binder, I'm reminded on why I work hard and what I do for a living. This is a reminder of all of the love that I bring into the spaces, and I want to see that every single time I look at the binder. On the back, I similarly have a picture of my, my brother, who is my best friend in life, um, and then his daughter, who is the cousins of my uh, two boys, um, and we're at the beach in San Francisco. And the point is, every single time I look at this binder, I'm reminded I work for my family. My family comes with me every place that I go. Uh, let's go ahead and open it. So the first thing that we see here is a copy of my values and professional and personal vision statement. Uh, you can see these online as well. I've linked them on my website. I'll drop that in the description on this thing. The point is right after I see my family, which is one of the reasons that I work, I'm reminded of why I work. What values do I bring into the work that I do? What is my top level professional vision statement? And otherwise, what do I wanna do with my life in work? And then what do I wanna do with my life at home? I have a quote from a great book called Grit. And grit is about holding the same top level goal for a very long time, um, and we'll talk about that. So the point of this binder is it's actually a way to organize my life. Um, this gets into this concept. So this book, uh, this comes from a book called uh, Getting Things Done by David Allen. So I should actually show this to you. Uh, one of the things that I think really strongly about is when I read, so this is the book Grit by Angela Duckworth. I read the whole thing. The point is that as I read this, I thought very deeply and I started to build it into my systems. The same thing, getting things done. Read this multiple times actually, and then I started to incorporate that into the system. Um, and similarly, there's another book called The Bullet Journal Method by Ryder Carroll. Read this book and started to incorporate in the system uh, all the time building my own systems that I use for productivity. Uh, so the point of the Horizons of Focus model is it allows me to think about the different responsibilities in my life moving forward. So the ground level is calendar events. We'll talk about that in a minute. Um, horizon one is immediate goals. Uh, I always call those projects. So anything that takes a week to a year to finish, then I've got short-term goals, a year to five years, mid-level goals, five to 15 years. Top level goal is my single career long focus, and then hopefully I can tie that into the values, purpose, and principles that I, I want to um, live in my life. And so when I think about this binder, I actually kind of uh, track all these different things in different ways. Um, and this gets into the, um, the index. So um, one of the first things that I do is I track my horizons of focus model. Um, so the first document, 0.0, .0 is this document. That's page 0.0, .0 in that. And then I've got a horizon to focus model to remind myself what that looks like. Now I have my binder index. We're actually looking at that. It's two pages, color coded, right? So it has all the stuff that I do on a daily basis that's organized from horizon zero, horizon one, horizons two through four. Uh, we'll talk about monthly logs. So this is all into the future and this is looking backwards. I'll also show you behind me, I have a whole system to capture this. And then I got custom collections. This comes from the uh, bullet journal system. So tracking all the different stuff that I do on a daily basis so that I have a nice place to put it. Um, here's my bullet key. So as I'm making notes, um, I have different symbols that I use. So this is for tasks that are uncompleted. When I complete, I put little check marks. Sometimes I capture tasks on my daily log, but I can't finish in those days. And so I'll migrate those either in my daily, weekly, monthly, or yearly migration. So um, I have a whole process in migrating. It's covered in that. Um, introduced in the book the bullet journal method but I've customized it sometimes I have open questions that I capture in my notes and things that I want to emphasize and projects that I want to put into my custom collection when I'm done migrating stuff I'll show you what this looks like I just put a little M with a migration through and that means I finished migrating everything on that page so there's nothing else that I, it's open loop and sometimes I have events that I want to capture and I use color coding for the whole thing and the point is that that's the front matter of this binder uh, and then I go into the future log so this term, this week, um, I have a whole d document on how to do this. Um, next term, so I carry about uh, five quarters with me, so about a year and three months in advance. And then I've got like a 10-year plan and a 50-year plan that I track, just briefly. Um, and then we go into the uh, current monthly and daily logs. 
Um, so let's go just go ahead and take a look at this. The first thing that I do every quarter is I track my schedule. Habitually, I do my morning workouts. I'm getting back into the stage. I used to do morning work sessions, so I'm trying to get eight hours of sleep a night. So um, I've been doing about three or five days of exercise a week. I want to work up to eight, uh, five days a week. Um, and then I've got my other r routines. So I've got some deep work routines that I do in the morning, and I have some uh, bullet journal reflection times and stuff that uh, my sleep routines with my kids and everything. The point is that this is a really good uh, mechanism for me to track what I'm supposed to be doing on a daily basis. So you can think about this as horizon zero. And basically it just tells me what am I going to do on a day-to-day -day basis and how should I spend my time. I have other documents in my teaching career that help me manage this, but that's the major one. Um, I also have a public version of this that I post on my website so my students can see it. They don't have to see what I plan to do with my time. They just have to see when I'm available to them. Um, and so I do track that just in case I'm meeting with a student. So again, that gives me um, what you might call horizon zero, which is on the day-to-day -day stuff. And basically it just tells me how am I gonna use my time on a day-to-day -day basis, right? So once I go one step up, which is my immediate goals, this is stuff that I definitely want on my calendar within the next year. So let's go off to horizon one. So horizon one, I create, uh, calendars. Um, I will link in the description. I have full um, documents on, on how I think about making these things. I have my students do it every year, uh, every quarter. It's called Conquering College Lab 1. It's all about scheduling. So this is my current term. It's fall quarter 2022. I have birthdays in there. I have uh, appointments that I have to make, holidays, um, special events that I'm going to do. Um, the same thing's true uh, here. So this is uh, winter quarter. I've got some uh, work that I have to do for maintenance. I've got some parcel work, uh, property taxes basically, um, and special notes to myself. So this is next quarter, right? And I've made this a year ago. Um, and then I've got spring quarter. So this is two quarters in advance. I've got some stuff that I have to do uh, to make sure that my son, that I'm not paying for extra childcare. Um, and each of these just has a bunch of important dates on it. They have birthdays of people that I love. They've got holidays for the school year, math department meeting dates. Uh, and so basically, this allows me to look into the future and as stuff uh, comes up that's non-routine, right? So this is non-routine meetings and health appointments and stuff. Uh, I can just put that in there. And the same thing's true, this is summer, so now I'm four quarters in advance. Summer, I've got some stuff that I need to do for our car and taxes to pay, et cetera. And then this is next fall, so I'm now five quarters in advance. I already, uh, my cousin has a wedding on this weekend, so I'm gonna uh, make sure to make that happen. And then I've got some birthdays coming up. Um, and the point is that I'm able to schedule um, within a year all the stuff that I definitely don't wanna miss. And that helps me avoid conflicts and really to manage my uh, future responsibilities well. So that gets uh, horizon zero, horizon one. Um, I've got a bunch of terms. The last thing I, I guess I should show you is um, I print out special lists. So this is the uh, formal academic schedule for my, uh, my school. I print that out and I keep it because I always wanna know uh, what the school's holidays are and things like this. This is my son's school, so I know what his holidays are, which are slightly different than mine. There's a, a table here. And then I have some professional meetings that happen every year that I'm interested in. So I just track when those are so that as I'm looking at my calendar in future years, I kind of make sure that I'm able to schedule the ones that I want, right? So the point of that is that gets there. Now I'm into the Someday Maybe, maybe projects. Um, each year, you'll see this in a bit, I have specific projects that I wanna get done, but then there's larger projects that are um, important for my future that I'm not ready to schedule, but I don't wanna lose those. So um, I, I just keep these on uh, post-it notes, and the reason that I keep them on post-it notes is that when I'm ready to change, so uh, here's an example, I'm currently not gonna be publishing this right now, I'm working on something else, and I'm also not gonna be, do, I, I think I'm gonna decide not to work on this project, right? Um, so the moment that I release those, it's super easy to schedule, right? Now I just release that energy. And then if these are indeed important to me, um, sorry about that, I can just say like, okay, I'm not ready to work on those yet, but when I am, I'll just come back to this major project list and I'll take them off the someday maybe and I'll actually schedule them for a particular quarter when I'm gonna get them done. Um, and that's a really, really nice way to track long-term projects to make sure that um, I don't lose the creative juice that ha happens when I'm actually um, tracking those projects. But at the same time, uh, I'm not stressed out about committing 
in, in full. When I was younger, I used to actually write it out. And then when things change, I had to rewrite the entire thing. So the post-it note problem solves that. Nice thing is I can go about 10 years in advance. My job is nice. I really like my job. So I can actually schedule um, maintenance. My maintenance, uh, last maintenance under my warranty happens in 2024. So I've scheduled that here. I've got some uh, major paperwork to make sure that I continue to advance on my salary schedule. Um, I've got some stuff at my work that I know are, are going to routine, assume, assuming that I actually stay up and uh, in this job. So the nice thing is I have about 10 years of flexibility to think about where I want to be in the future. I don't stress out that, about this. Normally when I'm scheduling stuff on a day-to-day -day basis, uh, I'm doing it within one year. Um, but the nice thing is I can kind of see major milestones in my next 10 years and kind of think about how does my work now relate to those major milestones. Um, this document is really special. This is a 50 year plan. And because it's a little bit hard to show you in that document, I'll show you here. Uh, so in my life, I started my job at Foothill College in uh, 2013. So I just track when I started, what academic year that was. Uh, this has to do with my salary step. So as an employee at Foothill, um, you all can check my salary if you wanted to. It's a beautiful thing about being at a public institution that has a union. We, we publish a lot of information about um, how employees are, are tracked. So I'm kind of tracking where I am in my salary scale. And I'm also track, tracking my monthly and yearly gross income. I have a net approximation that tells me how much I'll make per month there. Um, and then I have my age and my wife's age. And then I have my kids' age. As my kids grew up, I added them to this, these columns and tracked their age. I highlight the current year in green so that I know kind of where I am along this process. And then over here, I have major life accomplishments that are important to me. Um, so I get hired, we had our wedding, my son was born, my other son was born, I got tenure, um, and then some major other things off into the future. And this allows me to kind of just see in the future. Of course, I'm not committing in blood. The point of this is not to say like, one, I have to make this happen this way, or two, um, that once I write it down, it has to happen. The point is, this allows me to kind of think into my future and then reverse engineer um, the things that I want to accomplish and make decisions about that today. So uh, one of the points of having my kids age um, over here in this other column, I track my uh, when they're going to be in school. And so the nice thing is I can kind of see when they are going to be in um, college. And that allows me to kind of track where I'm going to be at that time. And I know right now the United States doesn't pay for college education. My wife and I are both uh, working professionals. And so I don't think we're going to get FAFSA money if the current system projects forward. And so what I do is I kind of reverse engineer how much I think college is going to be, divide that by the number of months between now and then, and then that gives me a, a, a standard idea of how much money I might want to put away every month um, to track my son's college education. Um, and the other thing too, when I'm thinking about major projects, so Foothill College has this beautiful thing called a, a professional development leave. Um, I'm hoping that I can do YouTube videos for the rest of my career here just for my students. And so I kind of track when those are going to happen. And this gives me an idea of what I can get accomplished between now and the time that I submit. Um, and, and basically, all of this allows me to reverse engineer decisions that are off in the future so that I can make decisions today. The same thing is true for retirement. So on this document, I actually have one I plan to retire partially. Um, and so now I can kind of think about how much money I want to set aside. Um, and I use CalPERS to do this. And so the point of this is this allows me to relate the stuff that I'm doing today, this year, this month, this year to future plans that are really important, retirement, kids' education, uh, financial goals, et cetera. Um, and so when I keep this in my binder, it's a very, very friendly reminder to me to be thoughtful about how I use my days so that I can skate to where the puck is going, so that I can make decisions today that are good for my future life. And of course, this is all editable, right? So, um, you know, God forbid something happened to my family, I can delete this and cry and get therapy and all that. But um, the hope is that we all stay safe and we all stay healthy, and then I can use this document as a way to make decisions for my future. So I have this in PDF, um, in electronic form, and then I keep just a PDF printout of that um, in my binder as a way to remind me, hey, on a month to month basis, make sure that I am looking at my financial plan and looking at the stuff I do on a week to week and month to month basis and aligning what I want for my future to what I'm actually doing today, right? So that I'm not surprised by anything. So anyways, that's how that document works. Okay, so that gets me to like uh, from, you know, day to day stuff. So if you're thinking, 
uh, that's ground, horizon one, horizon two, horizon three. Uh, the document that you see, my purpose and values, I actually have here. And so I can actually ask myself, how does my purpose and values relate to all the different horizons under that? Uh, top level goal, I actually articulate here as well. So this is really step uh, horizons four and five. Um, and all this other stuff is just ways to make sure that when I spend time during the day, that I'm aligning the time that I spend with the values and vision that I have for my life. So that gets us through the, you know, her, all the horizons basically. And now we have backward looking stuff. So all of this is forward looking. This is what I would call backward looking. I'm just implementing what I call my sprints list. So if we go over here to the orange, that's the nice thing. This is orange. This is orange. That will get me immediately to the current monthly log. So my current monthly log, I have a few different types of information. I have what I call my sprints list. These are major projects that I'm going to work on um, on a week to week and month base, monthly basis. So um, one of the issues with me is that I have m hugely ambitious plans that usually last like few years. Uh, so I'm in the middle of like a, a two decade long YouTube video pull on my linear algebra. But when I think about two decades of work, it's too much. And so one of the things that I'm going to be doing is breaking those into small like week long chunks or two week long chunks. So this video that I'm working right now, I've been working on for about a week. By the time I finish this video and the corresponding blog post, that will be a two week sprint. Um, and so I'll actually make a little post-it note and I'll go ahead and schedule that on when I get that sprint done just so I can see myself making progress. So I'm just implementing that now. After that, I have my month to month stuff. Um, it is October 31st, so it's the first uh, day of the month. Uh, so this one doesn't is not finished, but let me show you what this looks like um, for one that is. So if you come back here with me, um, one of the nice things about using a binder and not a journal is that um, that's infinitely expandable. And then back here, I have uh, entire folders of my life. So I don't know if you can see this. So I have, um, I have this little uh, filing cabinet back here. And in this filing cabinet, it goes all the way back to 2018. Um, and then the stuff before that I have out in, in the shed. So, um, you know, in here, there's just a bunch of data. So we can actually take a look at what this looks like. Um, this was the one that I just did today. I did my monthly migration uh, this morning because it's the first day, you know, I'm gonna pay rent and all that stuff today. So this is from October. Um, basically, I've been tracking my exercise. So uh, yellow means run, uh, orange means upper body work. Um, my, my kids got sick, so I'm, I did a little bit less than I should have, but that's okay. Um, and then I have my unfinished task lists. So as the month goes by and I finish stuff, so one thing that I guess this is useful, um, every day I make a log of what I need to do. So today I need to pay bills. I did my monthly migration. I got to do some stuff in the in the um, yard. Probably won't finish that today. Um, and then I got some other stuff that I have to finish. And as I finish it, I either check it off, but sometimes I don't finish it. And so I'll migrate it. If I migrate it to another day, then I just make that day I schedule it. But sometimes there's bigger projects that I won't migrate. So for example, this Math 48A lesson 11 solutions uh, depending on whether or not those are written this might take me somewhere between like six hours maybe and in that case i don't want to lose it and so what i'll do is i'll actually migrate that to an unfinished task list and that's major projects that i can't finish this month but i definitely don't want to lose right so this was pretty long i had a a, a pretty long uh, unfinished task list here for october and so this morning what i did is i just migrated all the stuff that I wanted to November. So now I have my November unfinished task list um, right here. It has a, just a bunch of stuff that I have to get finished. Um, and what's nice about that is it means that I have a whole log of everything that I have done in the past organized by month, right? So you can kind of see this. Uh, here's the last week of the month, the second to last week of the month, um, all of which have uh, daily logs. Sometimes my kids write on my daily logs because they think that's cute. Um, and so I can kind of reverse engineer the month. There's my the second week of the month and the first week of the month. I track my runs, I track my strength training, I track my to-do lists, right? Um, and so at the end of each month, I actually have a very detailed report of the, the stuff that I have finished, the stuff that's unfinished, I just move forward. Um, and that's what this is all about, right? It's, it's a, a, a weekly and monthly log of all the stuff I'm working on this month and it goes backwards. Um, 
And so at the start of the new month, I'll just take the old month's unfinished tasks that I want to continue doing and I'll, up, I'll migrate them. And all the other stuff I'll kind of log in the historical record. Um, and so that's the monthly stuff. And then of course I also have a daily task list. So my daily logs document um, each week. I actually have like a weekly report that tells me when did I exercise, when did I do deep work. Um, and then since today is really the first day of this week, um, as soon as I'm done with this today, hopefully I'll, I'll get a lot more of this done, I'm gonna transfer this here. And then each week I just have seven days long, right? So it just allows me to track that whole seven days. As soon as I'm done with those seven days, I make sure to migrate to the next week. I paper clip those together and I put it back in my filing cabinet over there. And that allows me to track all these different levels of uh, commitments that I have and align those with the major goals that I have, right? So that's how I deal with my to-do lists and my historical records. The last type of information that I have are my custom collections. So these are projects that are open stuff that I wanna remember, but I don't wanna think about. So um, here's an example. I've been working on implementing the Bujo system. So when I do deep reading, um, I actually rewrite a book completely with my own needs. Um, and so I'm working on this one. As I rewrite it, I actually have the, the stuff that I want to finish. And it takes a little while to do this, right? This, this is a good amount of work um, as I, as I kind of generate my own systems. Um, I track those and this allows me to kind of manage all the stuff um, just in terms of like how do I become more efficient and effective as a planner. So those are all my systems. The next one is my mental inventory, right? These are open projects that I have. Um, and you can see this here, right? So I have my Bujo Sensitive, my mental internship in inventory. I have some authorship projects that I'm doing. I have both a YouTube and a blog that I'm working on. And so I just track ideas for those in those lists. And then I've got some faculty projects that I do on campus. If I go to that space, I can get there pretty quickly. So let's go ahead and take a look at the blog posts. So this is gonna be 4.2. I go back here, uh, zero, one, two. Um, I just started this list, so I haven't updated it yet because I'm re-upping my YouTube project, but here's one. Here are my blog post ideas, so I've got a bunch of ideas. Each of one is a blog post. You see that I'm actually working on this right now in this video. Um, and that's really nice because it means that as the ideas come to me, I have a very flexible place to capture those. Um, and I just update that as time goes on. Every time a new idea comes for that project, I put it here, I track it, I either finish it or I migrate it. Um, and that's really nice. So here's my um, faculty projects. I've got that going on, right? And so the point is I have a really, really nice flexible um, system that allows me to capture all of that stuff. Um, you know, this gets, now I have financial goals. I also got exercises. I like to, I'm really trying to get back in good shape. So I've got different types of exercises that I want. I do research online and then I turn those into actual um, habits that I'll use at home. I've got a bunch of stuff for my family. I'm joining my kids PTA. I got meals that I cook for my family, breakfasts, um, activities that I do with my kids. And so the point is that I don't want to have to think about that. Sometimes my kids get sick or um, my, my wife is working and so I'm on with the kids and I, there's, I want to do some stuff. So instead of having to think, I just create lists that allow me to like be really flexible and I give the kids an option. You know, we can actually look at those lists. Um, so here's my exercise habits. I'm building that. This is a uh, kids PTA stuff. Um, but yeah, so like here's a bunch of stuff that I can make for the family. The moment before I go to uh, shopping, I just kind of look at the list and say, which of these might the might my family want? And sometimes I'll ask them, I'll be like, do you want any of these? And then I'll just go shop for those items. Um, and then the same thing's true for like activities to do with family. We've got a bunch of different activities and I'll uh, continue to update this as I make this. And that's really nice, right? Because if I'm, uh, if I'm with my family and want to plan something, we can kind of just look at all the stuff that we might do um, and it gives us some options, right? It just makes it a little bit easier to track that. So that's kind of fun. Um, and then the last one is just shopping lists. So on a day-to-day -day basis, um, when I'm doing my stuff, I wanna know what I need to shop for. So I'll just make lists. I've got a, a Costco list, Safeway list, dollar store, um, stuff that are close, uh, stores that are close by. This allows me to dump those ideas as they come. Um, and so what's nice about this is that using this system, um, it's infinitely expandable because it's in a binder. Um, I, I track it by information type. Um, and then every week, so at the end of every day, I do a migration. So I actually migrate from the last days to the next days. At the end of every week, I do a weekly migration. So I make sure that everything that week is migrated. I've tracked my exercises. I've tracked my deep work. 
And then at every end of every month, I do a big one where I, I take the last month's stuff you know, so this morning, right before I make this video, I took all the stuff that I did last month, I transferred it to this month, um, and then I made sure that I had captured all the projects that I was working on. And as soon as that was done, I simply, you know, paper clip this together, I go back to my filing system, and I drop it in the front. And this allows me to kind of track um, where I'm at on a given month to month basis. Um, I'm not sure what's going on here. There's something. Uh, oh, yeah, of course, I put it here. Yeah, so uh, anyways, that's my uh, dream calendar process. Um, let me put this here. And that allows me everywhere I go, I, I keep this thing close by and I just make sure that I, I track that stuff and it helps me make a connection between the work that I do in my day job with the long-term visions and goals and life purpose that I want to create for myself. Um, I will uh, post in the description, I'll try to timestamp this and I'll post some resources that I think are helpful. And the reality is that most of this came from reading these books. So I've got Grit by Angela Duckworth, Getting Things Done by David Allen, uh, The Bullet Journal Method by Ryder Carroll, The Powerful Engagement by T Jim Lair and Tony Schwartz, So Good They Can't Ignore You by Cal Newport, uh, Designing Your Life by Dave Evans and Bill Burnett. I actually didn't read this, but, um, when I designed my stuff, I had access to ideas, and then when I read this, I, I realized that the ideas that I were using, they highlight in this book. Um, and so I think it's worth, for those of you that haven't um, done this stuff yet and are interested, that's a good book to read. And there's a book called Decisive by Chiff Heath and Dan Heath, um, all of which are, um, all of those books align with the idea of trying to make um, a, a larger vision for our life and then align that larger vision to the actual work that we do on a day-to-day -day basis. And so this is my mechanism of organizing all that. Um, I'll also make sure to link to blog posts that share some of the resources. So if you're interested in downloading those and making your own, it's pretty simple to make. All, this is just a binder. These are simple uh, plastic sleeves and then all I, I need is a printer with some post-it notes. Probably the entire cost of this thing uh, is maybe like $20 or less. Um, and then it's infinitely expandable, right? Like this, this is one of the reasons that I don't use the journals that uh, Ryder Carroll uses is that um, you have to do this cross-reference thing. But in this, I never have to cross-reference. I just add the paper wherever I want it. It's really flexible. It allows me to do a lot of creative work uh, very, very quickly. So anyways, I hope you enjoyed that. I hope that gave you a sense of how this works. There's more to the system than just this binder. Um, all of the filing systems and the binders that you see behind me are part of this process of tracking work, but this, I'm not gonna cover those in this video. I'll cover those in future videos when I start talking about how I manage uh, the various paper and workflow processes um, a la getting things done. Thank you so much for your attention, y'all. I hope this is helping you get a sense of um, how I do really creative projects over long periods of time. Much love.